Hey everybody, I am Orbit, and welcome to another video. In this video, I will be explaining how to get the Hubble Palette look with uh, HOO data in Photoshop only, so no pics in sight, uh, nothing like that. We're just using Photoshop and maybe some serial to do some um, just background extractions and stuff, but as far as color goes, we are using Photoshop only. And here are the two images of which I actually did this technique on. This technique was first shown to me by an amazing processor. So the first nebula we are trying this on is the North American Nebula, uh, which you can see right here. Um, not largely stretched, you can see it's pretty dim still, the nebula isn't really popped. Uh, but you can see how red this is, so we're going to open this up uh, fo in Photoshop. Okay, and here we go right here. As you can see, this image is quite dim. So uh, we're going to give this a little bit of a curve stretch just to make it a little bit more pop. That'll be good. Um, so now here we start getting into the colors. So the first thing we want to do is go to Selective Color, which is right here in Adjustments, Selective Color. And then you want to go to the red channel. Make sure you're on the red channel and play around with these colors. So you're going to want to turn the magenta down for sure to get of it that yellowish color that you see in your Hubble palette images um, and give it a little bit of yellow really get it to where you like it which about right there um, in my taste in my eyes looks good so I'll leave it right there now we're gonna go into a curves um, layer so adjustments curves and we want to go to the blue channel and we want to take this curve right in the middle of the data line and bring that up. And then right here beside it in the uh, where the blacks are going to be, we're just going to bring that down a little bit so you can see on how the color, it looks like a little bit of purple starting to come out, which is what that should look like. So now we're going to go add green, same thing, we're going to bring it up in the actual color data itself and then go to black point and lower it down a bit, just play around with that a bit. Uh, I'm going to go back into blue here, add a little bit more blue. Something like that will be good for right now. Um, uh, let's open another curves layer actually and do it again, add that blue. Okay, now we're going to add that green, add that greenish. So you see we're starting to, starting to pull that cyanish color out. But uh, now we want to go back into selective color. So we can go into magentas and start playing with it. Um, of course, add some magenta to lighten it up a bit. Yellow, that'll be good right there. The blacks are really kind of fine. Um, if we go into yellow here, we can add a lot of cyan and stuff. So you can see we kind of we kind of bleached these out a bit. That so you can see they're kind of white. So uh, we're gonna go into curves, and we're gonna add some of that red back, um, just enough to be able to get that data that we kind of bleached out kind of back and then as you notice we added a lot of red everywhere too so we'll try to equalize that with the blue and with the green again go into another selective color layer uh, yellows so now you can start playing with that uh, yellowish color that you got um, of course, just play around with the colors, get what you like. You don't have to be exactly like uh, me. If that's not what you want, if you want the color to be different, then go for it. Um, magenta. Turn down the magenta a little bit. I mean, the cyan in the magenta channel. Um, add a little yellow there. Alright, so... As we're doing this, you can see that we have introduced a lot of very blocky color noise, which to fix that, just create a new layer, Windows Shift Alt N plus E, 
um, to create a new layer and then you want to go into camera raw filter so once you are in here you can now zoom in and see all of the color splotchiness and noise that we have created that looks really really bad um so go into the detail option and turn color noise reduction all the way until you start to see that all start to fade away and then that'll be good right there um i don't we can maybe go ahead and just do a slight normal noise reduction which i think just a very subtle one like that would be fine <clears throat> um do some other normal adjustments maybe add some clarity which i'll do um exposure contrast okay now while we're in here we can mess with the curves in here though we can add some more blue um add some more of that green and then add a little bit more of that uh that red starting to peek out uh maybe bring that that green a little bit more still and we should have something like this um to work with now um, I'm gonna go ahead and crop the edges out of this because you can see Starnet definitely has messed up with there being no filled flattener on this scope. So we can just go ahead and crop that bit out because that part's looking really ugly. All right, go back into selective color again. A lot of selective color. Um, we can just again mess around with the cyan now within the cyan channel to get uh, the blue how we're gonna like it. And then go back into yellows and um, I'm gonna add a little bit of cyan, add all the cyan actually, add a little bit of magenta. Um, and add a little bit of black to it. Okay. So now, some Starnet artifacts that are caked in these color noise. So we want to get rid of those too. We paint over this with the spot healing brush to get out that color noise that we do not want at all. And uh, those star noise artifacts that are very irritating. Uh, there's a big one right here, big noticeable one we can get rid of. Right there that we can get rid of. Right here. This will need another color noise reduction, by the way, desperately. But we're not going to do that right yet. So we want to open up another curves layer real fast again. Um, I think what this is needing is maybe a little bit more red. Something like that. Blue. And then bring down the black point of the blue. And now it's in, we're starting to get a little purpley again. So we're going to try to fix that by going into the green and leveling it out like that. There we go. Okay, so as you see here, the colors are definitely looking... Uh, quite similar to Hobo Palette already, but definitely still a good away from where we want it to be. So now what else we're going to do for the colors is go back to camera raw filter. All right, now what we're going to do is just change the temperature a little bit to start making these yellows kind of pop again, but not where the blue starts to go away. And uh, we, we can add a little bit of saturation too, I mean, a little, just a little bit, and come back out of that. And now again, we're going to do a green curve 
right here in the actual data itself. Which by creating all these curves just means your Photoshop will start to get laggy. Which to fix that, you can actually um, go into layer up here in the corner and then flatten image and then that'll, that'll get rid of that lag that starts to appear once you start doing a lot of curve adjustments and stuff. Um, a little bit more blue, another selective color, uh, add a little bit of cyan, a little bit of magenta, Turn all the way up black, add a little bit of black. Um, now for the cyan's. Again, just kind of mess around and play with the colors how you like it. Again, it's looking a little bit purpley still for my liking, so I think I'm gonna do another green curve. Something like that will be good. Um, so now again we have introduced a lot of color noise so make a new layer go back to camera raw filter okay detail color noise reduction wipe that all the way back um, and another noise reduction again I'm just gonna keep playing with these curves So something new now, um, we have the color balance adjustment setting right here, which we want to tap on. And uh, we're going to go to mid-tones right here, and we're going to bring up the red a little bit to rescue that red that we've been losing amongst all of the blue that we've been adding. And now we want to go to shadows, and we want to... Um, mess around with the colors until we get them good because we have affected the shadows quite a bit which I think we'll keep like that now we're getting a lot of blue here in the corner which we can fix with selection here um, in a minute but I think this is pretty good so far um, another selective color yellows Alright, so now what you want to do now that we got all of that ready. Okay, so now we want to grab our lasso tool out and feather. Um, just feather how much you're going to need, um, which depending on how big you're selecting of an area. Um, we'll need more feathering and we can start to add saturation where needed. Um, as you can see, this is starting to fall short of the orange color, so we'll select that go into color balance and add a little bit of red to equalize that with the other parts of the area which I think it might need a little bit of some more adjustments so add a little bit of red a little bit of yellow there we go click that and start making a pop um, I see right here this started to lose its color so we can select this back and add a little bit of red to that and then a little bit of yellow so of course we're getting that back the blue is here we got this yellow so this is already looking good but it's not quite on how i want to um finish it yet so back to selective color back to yellows um we're gonna play around with the colors a little bit again Again, I'm I'm really liking how these yellows are starting to look now. Right, so now we're gonna go back into cyan and just add some cyan, and uh, you see that's it's starting to look really good. I'm I'm already liking how this looks. Now I think we're gonna make the final touches to the color. 
uh, for this image um, exactly which we're gonna go in uh, deep dive in here and see on what's going on with this noise and you see this noise is pretty intense so we'll do a pretty good noise reduction right there and um, maybe a little bit of clarity um, I definitely needed more data on this object because it was quite um, noisy but uh, now uh, I think the last thing we're gonna do for really the initial color is removing this blue in the corner that we don't want which means we're gonna go back to the lasso tool and feather it by a lot more saying this is big obviously you this is data specific you might not have a big blue spot in the corner um, this is data specific remember um, this is initially how you do it but it's going to be different per data so um, don't expect to just copy me and get the same results because all data is different it also depends on the natural color of your nebula um, this one was a deep red because I shot this with an HA modded DSLR and um, with a duo band filter so I got those deep reds so if you're shooting with a stock DSLR um, chances are this is going to be more pink than red so All right, I think this is good. Um, you can also make final touch-ups. Again, there, I, I'm spotting uh, still more Starnet artifacts that we want to remove from this data specifically because Starnet artifacts do not even look close to good. All right, I think this is it. Uh, as you can see, these are the colors. So we're gonna apply the star image and I will show you the completed image. So control A, control C, and then we're gonna come here and control V. We're gonna paste it on here. We're gonna go to where it says normal and then linear dodge add and then add those stars in right there. And there is it, that is the completed image. This isn't the best data in the world, and obviously you can modify these colors a little bit if you want. I mean, if we go into hue and saturation, I mean, you see you can modify these to look a little bit different, although I prefer this right here. I think this looks nice. Um, again, you could also go into color um, adjustments again and start, again, fiddling with these. Just, just do it how you like it. This is how I like it right here. I think this looks nice. Um, there is some blue splotchiness that I might deal with, but uh, this is initially how you do it. Uh, so HOO data and um, a Hubble palette look. Obviously, this is not exactly a Hubble palette. Better than this, um, especially you know if your data is better than this. Um, like I said, this is not the best data. These were very short subs, about 25 second subs. So um, if you if you got better data than this, there's probably a lot more you can play with. But um, I think this looks good right here. And then there is my rosette again right there um, that is finished uh, using the same techniques. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and goodbye.